there. Welcome back to the kitchen. We are once again working out of the skinny taste fast and slow. And today is a slow cooker day because we are making this. This is a chicken burrito bowl. And so the, the magic of her book here is it's either meals in under 30 minutes or something that you can throw in the slow cooker. So early this morning, I put in chicken thighs and it's like a pound and a half of chicken thighs. It's like an eight ounce jar of salsa, a can of beans, a cup of corn, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of garlic powder. You throw it all in and you let it cook for eight hours ideally. So out of that, let me see if I can show you. When you come back to it, you're not gonna be certain how this is gonna end up looking the way you want it to because what you're gonna have to do is shred it with a couple of forks. So I got my couple of forks here and it can seem like a daunting task, but it's actually quite easy. When you start going in there and just moving the forks around, that stuff has been cooking for eight hours. And so you're gonna notice when you first open it, like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of liquid. I'm just gonna have a liquidy mess. But the chicken is actually going to absorb that liquid as you shred it, and it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna be succulent and amazing. And towards those ends, like obviously people have questions about, you know, thigh meat, which would be dark meat versus chicken breast. Go ahead if you wanna use the chicken breast, um, the thigh, it's going to be a little tastier. In her book, she actually uses a number of bone-in recipes. Uh, because I've got a lot of kids and missing a bone is, first of all, something I've done. And happily, my husband was the one that got it. But it's kind of just too big of a risk. So right now, this season in life, uh, I buy it purposely boneless. Or, you know, I, it, you could debone it yourself. So that's kind of the story there. But... Chicken breast, just to say, would work fine if you're kind of into that. But I love this recipe because we love rice bowls. Like, we love going to those restaurants that have burrito bowls. And to be able to recreate that at the house with a few, like, canned and jarred ingredients in there. Uh, and just to say, she has a recipe in the re within the recipe here for pico de gallo. Uh, our grocery store sells their own version of a pico de gallo that is super tasty. And so I don't bother to make my own. You totally could. It's tasty and wonderful and um, it's so, I think, satisfying to do. But we just don't because we're too busy. Um, and just in case you hear someone else talking, my husband is working from home because we're all on lockdown. And so we may well be in overlapping a bit but alas what can we do so hopefully if you can hear him hopefully it's not horribly distracting so when it comes to shredding i think your ocd tendencies will decide how long you sit here and shred for uh, i tend to find i get pretty darn close and then i've always missed something so i don't think i have ocd skills eh? or if i do they're not like they're not here but i can show you what this looks like now so there it is now. Looks quite a bit different from before I shredded it. And to that, in your bowls, it's shredded lettuce, shredded cheese, and pico de gallo, and rice if you want it. So she recommends two cups of cheese, four cups of lettuce, and then pico de gallo. So yeah, that's the whole thing. And when all is said and done, you get this. Oh, and I should also mention, at this very last step here, fresh cilantro. The recommendation is two tablespoons. So this is me estimating two tablespoons. And then you just kind of move that around, but that's going to give you a quick freshness to something that's been in a crock pot for a while. So just totally delightful. Love that. So hopefully you can give that a shot. Like I said, this is a totally delightful meal for our family. And, um, Hopefully you'll enjoy it too. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.